Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope your day is going super well. I'm having a good time. I'm in On One Photo Raw 2019 today, and it's a good product. I'm having fun with it, and I'm going to continue doing videos around it uh, just because I'm having fun, and it causes me to kind of stretch myself because I'm not as familiar with that product as I am with others, for example, and so I keep going in and practicing and learning and trying to do things and uh, try to share some tips and tricks. And uh, I appreciate a lot of you have given me feedback as well about things and shared ideas, which is super awesome and helpful. So thanks for that. Um, in this case, I've got this photo. Here we go. And this was shot in London uh, a couple of years ago um, on a tripod. It was a single exposure from a set of brackets. I generally fire brackets, especially in places like this where it can be kind of dark. But I took this one photo into On One and I thought, you know, I can make a pseudo HDR, kind of give it that HDR look, a little of that HDR charm, if you will, and uh, turn it into something a little bit uh, more interesting than it, it appears to be to me, at least right now. So I did that and that's what I turned it into, which is, you know, very much HDR looking, also some color shifts, um, and really just kind of tried to play up the, the mood and the drama there. And that's something I do a fair amount with architectural interiors like this one uh, that is like not if you're shooting like interior real estate uh, because you wouldn't want to get too grungy or crunchy in those kind of photos but for places like this public places uh, you know large buildings museums uh, cathedrals interior markets like this this is um, not can uh, Covent Garden uh, whew, I was about to call it Camden Market and I knew that wasn't right and I was gonna say Chelsea Market and I knew that wasn't right uh, Covent Garden. Anyway, um, but I like to get that kind of look and even though I fire brackets, I find that I'm often not building HDRs. I still like to do HDR, but I don't do it as much often because I don't feel like I need to as much. So anyway, here's what I made. I'm going to reset these filters and walk you through this stuff right now. Okay, here we are. Now this is um, after I've already applied uh, in the tone and color section of the develop tab. So I can show you before and after. Obviously, I brightened the photo a little bit. You can see I did that with the exposure slider. I bumped up mid-tones as well, and uh, down here I did some temperature changing. Uh, I made it uh, quite a bit cooler, and uh, that was it. I don't believe I went into details. I did not. So, okay, um, that was what I did in the develop tab. The real fun for me comes in the effects tab, and that's where you get all the filters, and that's part of the fun for me of uh, software editing is just grabbing filters and trying things and that sort of thing. And so, knowing that I wanted to create kind of a pseudo HDR look, the first thing I got, of course, was, hey, HDR look, big surprise, and boom, I mean, like, it immediately turns this into a, hey, Jim, wow, that's HDR, you, you really did it, didn't you there, Jim? Um, and, you know, a lot of people don't like that look where, you know, there's no real mystery in the photo, everything is lit fairly evenly well, and to me, that's the point of HDR, is you're kind of balancing out the light, you're kind of you know, um, making it uh, an even distribution of light across the photo. And this HDR look um, filter does that really well. So one more time, there's before and after. Um, and now um, I just went with the defaults here and then I made a couple of minor adjustments, uh, bumped up compression, bunch, bun, blah, 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 bumped up detail and clarity as well, but nothing um, really outside, uh, you know, extreme in terms of, um, past what was the default setting. But there's the before, and there it is with a little bit of, we'll call it enhancement. Um, again, you may not like the look, that's okay. For me, I like it in this kind of scene. So uh, the next thing I wanted to do was really attack colors because I don't like the, the colors that are there so much. I wanted to get it a little bit moodier, a little bit cooler kind of look. So I went with the uh, split toning, which is great at separating highlights and shadows, picking a color for each, and then a saturation level for each. But again, I, I went with, I mean, this is a very simple video, to be honest, because I went with the default um, on the blue. I just clicked on um, split toning, it defaulted to blue, and I bumped up the amount a little bit on, on both the highlights and shadows, but I went from there, where it's a lot more yellow and a little bit washed out and kind of, kind of flat to me, if you will, uh, to where the split tone now has really brought up those blues, which I like. I think it adds a nice mood, like in the ceiling and on the stone, However, what I don't like is that the yellows of the brick over here on the left and the yellow on that wall down below has really washed out too much. Um, you know, it wasn't super prominent, but well, you know, it kind of was prominent actually. Um, but I lost a lot of that with split toning, as you can see there. So that's where I came in with color enhancer. And I brought that back, as you can see. So there's before, a bit more muted. The yellows kind of disappeared in many ways. 
and after. And one of the things I like about the yellow and blue is they're opposite of each other effectively. So that gives you a nice color contrast in the image where you're playing blue and yellow off of each other. So um, that's one of the reasons I wanted to bring it back because I think it gives the photo more impact if you have those sort of um, complementary colors in play, right? So they're a little too much on the blue, kind of steel gray kind of blue and very muted yellow. I brought it back a little bit. I think it gives a nice color contrast as I, as I said. So how did I bring it back? I went into yellow and I just took the hue a bit to the left and the saturation all the way to the right. And then I went into the blue and I did a little bit there as well where I took the hue a little bit to the right and increased the satura saturation as well. I don't know how well you can tell that the blue has changed. There's before and after. You can't really tell a whole lot, but the yellow for sure is a big change and it also picks up some of the reflection of the light on these cobblestones here uh, when I increase the yellow. So there's before and after. I think we're, uh, we're getting there. But I didn't feel like I was done, so I went and hit it with sunshine and as you can see, that creates a contrastier version, uh, and it really does make that yellow pop. So there's before and after. I like that filter. Um, I think I made some minor adjustments, but I just went with the default settings. Again, like this is not like a big, wow, I did this crazy thing. It's really just playing with the filters and making some minor adjustments to what some of the defaults are, uh, but they work out really well a lot of the time, like in this photo. So there's sunshine before and sunshine after. And then I just hit it with the vignette, I went with a big softy and then made some adjustments. That's generally what I did uh, or do. I like the big softy quite a bit, but it's kind of heavy. And so I pulled that back a little bit and decreased the intensity of that. And that was really how I created this kind of pseudo HDR. There's the before, single exposure, too dark, uh, no detail. Uh, you know, uh, the fact that it's too dark means you're really only seeing well into the areas uh, where the light is, which is a couple of parts of the ceiling and some of that wall over there and a tiny bit on the cobblestones. So I really wanted to brighten that and then pop some of the colors as well. And there's the after. I feel like it's a, um, you, you, you would maybe assume that's an HDR photo, uh, which is okay. I mean, I was definitely going for kind of a crunchier look. And I think you also um, can tell that, you know, I brought back some of the colors. I like the yellow. It's popping, as I said, kind of playing off that blue. But I think we got some nice tones and a much better distribution of light from the original to the current version. And that's all it was, my friends. A few minutes, a few filters, and a little bit of fun, and boom, you, you can take a photo from really kind of something that you might pass over and say, eh, I don't really care, to, hey, I made a photo that, you know, whether you like it or not, it's definitely very different. Um, so you probably agree with me in that regard. You don't have to like the photo, that's okay. But I like doing this kind of uh, stuff with some of my cityscapes, where I really pop the details and the color and balance out the light and create that kind of pseudo HDR look. Anyway, that's it for this one, just having fun in on one. So hey, that's a good little tagline, having fun in on one. Uh, thanks for watching though, I appreciate it. I'd love for you to uh, give me your feedback about this kind of video. Uh, like, share, subscribe, comments down below. And I'll be seeing you soon, friends. I got more videos planned and more coming, so I'm gonna go back and make some more. So have a great one, I'll see you soon. Take care and adios.